Hi and welcome to another episode of Willis Garage Norway. This is part 5 of my Rubo style split top workbench build series where I am making and installing some hardwood inserts and dowels made from African hardwood floor planks. In part 1 you saw me designing the bench in Fusion 360. In part 2 you saw me start the build in real life by building the two bench tops. In part 3 you saw me building the base and in part 4 you saw me combining the base and the two tops. If you haven't watched those episodes yet, I recommend that you do. I will leave links in the description and also in the right hand corner info tag. I will also leave links for most of the tools and other stuff I use in this project so you can check them out. I made the decision to install some hardwood inserts where the bench dog holes was going to be bored in the tops. So I went into Fusion 360 and figured out where I wanted the inserts. They had to be placed so the dog holes would work with the future installment of a vise on the side and a leg vise. So I did some research on the interwebs and found what measurements would fit my requirements. The bench dog holes themselves are going to be 20 mm in diameter, that's approximately 0.8 inches. So I made the inserts 65 mm wide, approximately 2.6 inches, and decided they would be inserted 65 mm from the edges of the tops. While the width of the inserts were 65mm, I gave them a height of 10mm, that's approximately 0.4 inches. So this is what they would look like. Now all I have to do is to make them in real life. First I had to find the hardwood floor planks I was going to use, then I took out my miter saw and cut all the planks to length. I made them about 15 cm, approximately 6 inches longer than the final length, just to get some leeway on the length later on. When they were cut to length with the miter saw, I took them over to the table saw. I made this table saw in another series that I will link down below in the description and in the right hand corner info tag. First I made both long edges straight using my table saw fence and then took off the slots or ridges on the floor plank undersides. This gave me a straight plank that I could pass through my thicknesser multiple times to get them straight and to the desired width. That gave me 4 planks that would make up my inserts. I marked up all the measurements and used the inserts themselves as a straight guide for the Makita router. Taking about 1 mm per pass, I had to take multiple passes until I got the desired depth on one side. Then I had to move the straight guide to the other side and do the same thing there until there was enough material moved so that the insert would fit tight into the slots. This process had to be repeated on all four slots and after making sure they all would fit, I removed the inserts, wiped away all the dust particles and prepped for glue up. I added a lot of glue and used my trusted old silicone brush to apply the glue everywhere in the slot before placing the inserts and gently but firmly telling it where to sit. I did this on all four inserts and made a little clamp glue up art piece that I left for 24 hours before I could remove the clamps. 
I made the height of the insert oversized on purpose so I could use my router leveling jig that I made in part 4 of this series. The straight boards that I used as a level guide on the side of the workbench tops were still in the same place as in the last episode, so I fired up the router and took about 3 passes before the inserts and the tops were of the same height and level with each other. Now I used a couple of 90 degree angles and made a straight line on both sides of the bench tops to cut the edges straight. My cutting saw had a cut depth that was long from deep enough. But I made a straight cut with it and then ripped out my Japanese saw to manually saw off the rest of the cut. Even though this was softwood, I got my heart pumping quite a bit faster than normal. <laughs> Then I used the random orbit sander to sand off any inconsistencies in the end grain, also time consuming, but in the end I got the result that I was happy with, even though it wasn't entirely straight. I also took a good sanding on the rest of the workbench. Then it was time to make the dowels for the bench. Since the dowels was going to be 16mm, approximately 0.6 inches in diameter, I straightened and cut the African hardwood planks into multiple 20x20mm square pins. I took the pins to my beloved Coronet Herald wood lathe from Record Power. I have made an unpacking and assembly video on this lathe, link in the description or in the right hand corner info tag if you are interested. I had to make 32 dowels in total for the workbench and I calculated the length before starting. Therefore it was a lot of turning before getting all the lengths needed. I made sure the dowels were 16mm in diameter by using a caliper gauge while turning. When finished I sawed all the dowels to length so they were ready for installment. I went into Fusion 360 and figured out the measurements for the positions of the dowels and made marks on all of them. Then I had to make a dowel boring jig out of some hardwood where I just made two straight holes with the distance between the dowels.
I could then clamp this jig on top of the markings for the dowels and then drill the 16mm holes needed for the dowels. I double check the depth of the holes before drilling making sure not to make an error at this point. Before inserting the dowels I used painter's tape to mask the surroundings of the holes. I did this to prevent having to clean up all the glue squeeze out later on. I applied glue on the whole dowel and used a hammer to get it in all the way. I did this on all the dowels on the whole bench. I removed the painter's tape immediately after plugging the dowels. After 24 hours of drying time I used the Japanese saw to saw off the protruding dowels. This makes the dowel flush with the surface. And then I could sand off the rest of the glue squeeze out with my orbital sander. There was some cracks and tool marks on the bench so I found this wood paste from Liberon that had a natural color like the pine I was using on the bench. So I applied the paste in all the holes and cracks I could find before sanding it with my random orbital sander giving what I think to be a nice surface. So this product is recommended. After sanding the whole bench a couple of more times I decided it was time to apply a finish. I made inquiries on Facebook and on forums on types of finishes to use where boiled linseed oil clearly was a winner. But I really wanted something to seal off the bench top, so I went for a hard wax oil. I used Liberian's hard wax oil. One other thing that I don't like is the yellowness or the brownness a wood gets, especially a light wood, when applying a oil or something else to the wood. Therefore I want to try to use something to prevent this from happening. Hard wax oils comes with different color pigments. So I wanted to try a white pigment on the first coat. Then on coat 2 and 3 I wanted to use a natural color hard wax oil. So I applied the first coat of white pigmented hard wax oil, waited approximately 20 minutes before wiping it off with paper or cloth. I waited 24 hours before I went lightly over the bench with a 240 grit sandpaper. and then applied a coat of natural pigmented hard wax oil. Again waiting for 20 minutes and then wiping it off. Then I waited another 24 hours before applying a third coat of natural pigmented hard wax oil.
again waiting 20 minutes and wiping it off. I really do think this gave the workbench the look I wanted and prevented the yellowness that I don't like. Finally the base model of my workbench was near a finish so I could remove the blocks of wood I had underneath using a jack. When getting it down on the floor I could really admire the look of the bench and feel all the work hours put into it. I think it was worth it. I apparently also got a new solid wood king size bed in the workshop. This was it for building the what I call base model of the workbench. Next thing to do is to make the bench dog holes and the center beam. Then later I can make the voices and other accessories for the workbench. And if you hit that subscribe button maybe you will be here to see that. Meanwhile you can get behind the scenes photos and info on my website, Instagram or Facebook page. Links in the description. I would appreciate it if you like, dislike or comment on this video and until next time, goodbye.